Good afternoon folks, you're watching The Hungry Handgunner. I'm Nick, we are out on the range today and I have a review for you. However, I also want to do a big shout out to my channel members and my patron supporters uh, who have made it possible to get a new camera. So hopefully the video quality uh, will be a little bit better going forward. But today's video is something that I have been looking forward to bringing to you guys. It took me a little while to get the time and the round count with it because I don't normally carry guns like this. I am typically a uh, full-size gun guy. Uh, so it took me a little bit longer and of course the ammo situation is terrible across the board. But today I'm excited to bring you the full review on the SIG P365. This is just the standard one, no SAS, XL, optics ready, anything like that. Just the standard P365. So I think what we need to do before we dive in and I give you all the specs and all that good stuff is we need to shoot a little bit because why not? We're going to start with the 12 round magazine and then go to the 15 round magazine and have some fun. I just realized that I still have HSTs in the mag and I am not that big of a YouTuber to waste those needlessly. So I'm going to swap this ammo out for some range ammo and then we'll get to the shooting. So we're going to start things off uh, shooting it the way that I carry it. One chamber, 12 in the mag and then a backup 15 round mag. So let's have a little fun here. We're at 15 yards from the target for those who care. Fifteen round mag just feels weird. Not the easiest thing to conceal, but man, is it nice. Let's just finish them off as fast as we can here. And therein is my point. That was 12 rounds and 6.76 seconds with a 176 draw to first shot. Gotta remember I'm mostly about that dot life now, so the irons are a bit slower for me, uh, especially on this gun. I don't put in the work with it as much as I should, but getting closer to that acceptable 1.5. But still, 12 shots, 6.76 seconds, and I think they were all hits. If I'm wrong, then <laughs> you'll see something on the screen. But that's cool. Now I think it's worth mentioning here that just because this is relegated to a, I can't carry my full size gun so I'm going to take this little gun for me, doesn't mean that it would make a bad primary gun for you. 
different strokes, different folks, kind of like cars. That's why there's so many different options out there. However, I will say that out of a variety of small pistols in the subcompact class, this one is the one that I find myself gravitating towards more and more whenever time comes that I can't get away with my M9A3 or my Glock 45. I like this gun. I like the fact that I'm really not sacrificing a whole lot. It certainly doesn't shoot like the subcompacts of yesterday. It's not like an MMP shield, which is a gun that I like, but better things have come along in my opinion. Now you've probably noticed the conspicuous absence of 10 round magazines in this video. That's mainly because, well, the 10 round magazines just aren't for me. I, I don't like having a dangling pinky. So the 12 round mag allows me to get all three fingers down here uh, where I like them to be. And that 12 round mag really is the sweet spot because once I go to the 15, yes, I like having 15 rounds. I can certainly get a good grip. I can still choke up on the gun, but that becomes a lot harder to conceal. So that's a backup mag for me. If the 10 round mags work for you, that's fantastic and I hope that they continue to do so. It's just for me and my firing, whatever, I could probably work around it, but why? As long as I've got a 12 round mag that I hit pretty well with and a 15 round mag that I hit well with under time pressure from concealment, uh, there's no point in me really training to that 10 round mag when these 12 rounders are readily available, at least at the shop I work at. Can't get more of the 15 rounders, which is kind of a bummer. At the moment, they're, they're kind of hard to get. So I think this gun is kind of a do-all workhorse pistol when it comes to concealed carry. Without further ado, you likely didn't come here to just watch me and listen to me talk. So, uh, and if you did, I'm a little concerned about you, but we'll go ahead and go to the table. I'll give you a close-up on this gun, the magazines, and the sights, which I think are some of the best in class. Now the P365 is just a sweet little gun. There's no getting around it. You have some fantastic sights from the factory. Of course, it's going to focus on the rear and not the front. But you do have tritium vials on all three sights. You have a fantastic high contrast front sight, which I think is just one of the best that I've seen in the industry. As far as factory sights go, these are incredible. And I think companies like Glock should take note. You have some forward serrations here. You've got some aggressive enough serrations back here. You have a rail now. I will touch on the rail. You notice there's no notch here. You're gonna be kind of limited on what accessories are gonna work for you. Um, so there is that TLR7 sub, uh, maybe the perfect light for this. Obviously, I don't have the right adapter to run the lights that I have. And that is one thing that I'll ding it a point on, although there are workarounds. So here you can see it with the 12 round magazine. Very comfortable grip for me. Um, I've got large-ish hands and 12 round mag gets me plenty of purchase. Going to the 15 though, just to kind of highlight, I still get a full grip on the gun. However, you can see it is blocky and it is what it is. As a backup mag though, having the peace of mind that I have 15 more rounds for my subcompact carry gun in my back pocket is kind of a big deal. Uh, I like this quite a bit. As of today filming, I have roughly 1200 rounds through the gun. Um, and she's held up well. You can see a little bit of wear there on the barrel. Nothing crazy, she's been pretty reliable. As a reloader, I did run into some ammo, or projectiles, I should say, that this gun doesn't particularly like. That would be anything that is just a coated lead. I have found that it tends to prefer uh, plated projectiles or a jacketed, uh, nothing coated. So I just kind of feed it the same thing that I load up for my Glocks and stuff like that and stay away from the coated stuff that I reserve for my Beretta. But overall, the reliability has been fantastic. I've tried a few different bullet weights, 147s, 124s, and 115 grain. For carry, uh, I typically just keep her fed up with some Federal HST, 124s, and in my test firing with those rounds, the gun has proved to be reliable. Now we'll go over some specs on the gun. Obviously, it is a 9mm. We have a length of 5.8 inches. We'll go ahead and drop the slide there. 5.8 inches of length. 4.3 inches with a flush magazine. I haven't measured it with the 12 rounder in it, so it's gonna be a little bit more, probably half to three quarters of an inch more, but still not very much. You have one inches of width, 3.1 inch barrel, a roughly six pound trigger. We'll talk more about the trigger here in a second. And these are SIGs X-Ray 3 day and night sights. And again, that high contrast front sight is just awesome, stellar. Uh, and the tritium at night is sufficient and allows me to acquire those sights pretty quick. Weight with an empty magazine is 17.8 ounces. Now, unfortunately, I'm still not a real gun reviewer and I don't have a trigger pull gauge to really quantify that for you. But what I can tell you is that the trigger has smoothed up 
and it's not lightened up per se, but it's just a smoother uh, trigger press. Now, as far as striker triggers go, I think SIG has kind of a goofy trigger. Now, we'll try to get you to listen closely here. It's kind of spongy sounding, right? It doesn't sound quite right, but it works. And as long as that primer is getting hit with enough oomph to set off the round, I really can't pick straws, I guess, when it comes to the sound the trigger makes when it goes off. But it is interesting. It's different. If you don't have much experience with SIG striker triggers, uh, get some dry fire in with one and you will see it's just a very weird trigger. Not a bad one, um, just weird, just different. So there is that. Ergonomics on the gun are great. Uh, this gun is fantastic, even with my large-ish mitts. Uh, this gun fills the grip nicely. It, it feels good. Uh, my hand wraps around it. It seems to index nicely where I want it to be. And this is where it gets interesting. My wife is tiny. She's like five foot three. She's tiny. Uh, and her hands are significantly smaller than mine. This gun is comfortable for her too. As a matter of fact, most people who pick these guns up comment regularly and again I work in a gun shop so I am showing these off and people are like wow that feels good I don't know what SIG did but they did and it's quite impressive honestly now it would be closed-minded and naive of me to skip out on mentioning the fact that there are a lot of other guns in the subcompact sphere uh, that market is growing increasingly more saturated you have things like the Glock 43, the 43X, the 43X MOS. You've got, gosh, I don't know, nine or 10 variations of this gun, the P365 out there now. I may be exaggerating, but there are several different versions of this. You have the snag free sights, which I think is an answer to a problem that arguably very few people have. Uh, and then you have the XL where the frame's bigger and the slides are longer and you've got optics cuts and blah, blah, blah. You have the MP Shield Plus, you've got the Springfield Hellcats, you've got I know I'm forgetting somebody's favorite gun at this point, and they'll definitely let me know in the comments, but you have a lot of options. Um, so I'm not going to tell you that this is going to be the best one for you. Examine your needs, examine what feels good to you, uh, and ideally get out and shoot a variety of guns in this class before you choose one. Obviously, worst case scenario, you buy one, you have to buy another one because that one didn't work. And that's fine. Regardless of what the internet will tell you, you don't have to get it right the first try. So I think if you're in the market for a subcompact 9mm, you should try the SIG P365. And even if it doesn't work for you, you have the experience with the gun, therefore, to uh, extrapolate on why it didn't work for you for somebody else that may be making the same decision. Regardless, at the end of the day, train with whatever you get, whether that's the P365, the Glock 43, the Hellcat, whatever it is, get out and train, get some dry fire in, um, and just really apply yourself to learning that gun. Because as I've said before in other videos, Gun, the smaller the gun gets, the harder it's going to be to shoot and shoot well. It's not the same. Um, larger guns are just easier to shoot. And it is what it is, and people may argue with me until uh, the world comes to an end. But in my experience and several others, the smaller the gun, the harder it is to shoot, the more work it's going to take to get proficient with it. Doesn't mean it's mission impossible, just means it's mission a little bit more difficult. So. Uh, there is that, although I will say in the world of subcompacts, this has been one of the easier subcompacts to learn to shoot well, or acceptably. Uh, depending on your definition of well, I may not be there yet. I'm certainly not where I'd like to be. But above all, guys, be safe. I hope everybody had a good Halloween. Uh, this is my favorite time of year. It's kind of nice out. And have a good Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever it is you celebrate. I don't mean to trigger anybody with any microaggressions this year, but just have a good fall and winter season. Uh, I'm going to keep putting out content as regularly as I can. And again, a huge thank you to my patron and channel member supporters. Uh, you guys are awesome, and I appreciate all of you. And also, all of you that like, share, comment, subscribe, all of that, you guys rock too. I'm not real good at the whole YouTuber thing of uh, begging you guys to do this and do that. I figure if you like it, well... You know, you're smart enough to know where the subscribe button is or the thumbs up is. With all that being said though, if you found the video helpful, please consider subscribing. At 10,000 subscribers, I am getting tased uh, and that will be on camera for you guys to laugh at and enjoy and all that good stuff. So there is that and that's coming around the corner. Uh, but also consider giving the video a thumbs up or if you know somebody that would benefit from this video, send it their way and let them watch it. But above all, thank you all so much for being some of the best damn subscribers and viewers that YouTube has. Stay safe, keep shooting, and I'll see you next time.